So that's about 15? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Probably 20 at this point. So you can see all the parts here. The uh, instruction sequencer is fun to look at. So here's the instruction register. Here's the instruction sequencer. This is a one hot counter that runs on every instruction. The length of it depends on the instruction that you're currently executing. So instructions that run memory cycles typically take a lot longer than more cycles. So it crashed. Uh, I did, yeah. So <laughs> it does get a little bit flaky depending on temperature if you're running at low speeds. And again, it's a function of leakage current. So as you increase the temperature, then leakage current increases. So I'll probably have to reboot this guy. Um, just like power. Can we like liquid nitrogen cool this guy and, and get some more speed out of it? <laughs> no, no, slow down. Either or. Yeah, cooling it would definitely uh, certainly help. Uh, what it's doing right now is actually really interesting. It is loading a table of characters into the video memory. And you can actually see the accumulator here. Those bit patterns, those correspond with pixels in the letters on the screen. So it's almost like a persistence of vision display. So if you were spinning this right, if I was moving this back and forth really fast, which I am not going to do, <laughs> then you'd be able to see a, an entire character sideways, of course, because it's coming in a single row at a time. So that's what it's doing right now. Uh, going back to how this works, so there's a big ROM up here that takes the instruction and decodes it and turns it into a bunch of signals, uh, 131 signals. Those go into a bunch of uh, what they call random logic. So that's just purely combinational logic that uh, sort of recompobulates all the signals coming out of there and turn them into data path controls. And data path controls are these ideas down here. Those correspond with things that make sense, like accumulator, put the contents onto the special bus, or you know, whatever the control signal might be. And then underneath that, you can see all of the registers themselves. So I've actually added a couple of LEDs to uh, this design, a little bit more than the original fab had. So there is some rework. But I want to be able to, be able to see additional registers uh, there's an AOU here in the middle. There is what's called an add or hold register, so it's got some activity going on here. Uh, input and output. The uh, AOU tends to be very busy because it actually runs multiple calculations per instruction. So it does everything to do with memory calculations. If you're accessing the stack, it's what decrements and increments the stack. Um, is the there a PC count somewhere over here? Yes, so there's a program counter, it's split in two, and half of it is over here, and half of it is. Actually, they're both right over here. So program right, counter high is here. It. Program counter low is right next to it. Yeah. And uh, these are mostly uh, these are all latches for the uh, output path. Uh, these colored LEDs here, those are all the status flags. So they're color coded. You can kind of get an idea of what's going on. How many cycles for a single instruction? Depends on the instruction. So typically it's two minimum, and uh, it can go all the way up to. Eight. Yeah, they actually cheat, so there's fewer LEDs here. Uh, certain instructions, they said, well, we don't want to increase our one hop counter and add all this decode logic because I think there's only two instructions that need, really need more than that. And so what they did is they take the output of the one hop and they run it into the random logic where they have two additional flops <laughs> for one instruction, which is break, and then they have two additional flops for another instruction, which I'm forgetting right now. But basically, in the break instruction, that was, that's what puts the vector addresses on the bus. The uh, break instruction itself is uh, quite fascinating, and as it turns out, it's a terrible hack because the reset line in this chip does not run all the way over across the chip. The reset line, all it does is first it forces all zeros into the instruction register, which corresponds to the break instruction. The second thing it does is it turns on a flip flop uh, right over in here that latches, when it does that, it forces the random logic to behave slightly differently than it does for a normal break. And it forces the vector address to be different than what it is for a break. A break is a software interrupt. And so what happens when you power this thing up and you assert reset, it runs a modified break instruction that then gets you to your reset vector. So it is quite a hack, uh, which is also why you have to initialize all the registers yourself in code because they'll come up in whatever state they come up in. Uh, 